On behalf of the Undergraduate Philosophy Association, I welcome you all to the debate on an issue that has no doubt very familiar to many of us. Many of us have followed political discussions about the standing of evolutionary theory and have, I hope, wondered about the claims being made on behalf of all parties involved in this public discourse. I admit it can be frustrating at times to endure the numerous news broadcasts, TV specials, and written commentaries that claim to present unbiased accounts of the true nature of evolution. More often than not, they hopelessly confuse dogmatic assertion for logical argument and un unsubstantiated proclamations for scientific analysis. Tonight, however, we are presented with a special opportunity to cut past the politicized rhetoric which shrouds the public discussion of this issue and instead penetrate deeper into the scientific and philosophical veracity surrounding the numerous claims about evolution. The issues involved in our present debate are largely those dealing with biological evidence. But just as important to the dispute at hand are questions regarding the proper role of naturalism in science. Though we can point to empirical findings, we should not ignore all theoretical discussion. However, exclusion of brute biological facts or, however, in a study such as that of evolution, it would be highly out of, the order, out of order to follow abstract speculation to the exclusion of brute biological facts. In this debate, as in many others yet to come, science and philosophy must be wedded in order for our disputation to truly yield fruitful insights. I am grateful to the Department of Philosophy for making this debate possible, not only by helping organize it, but also by supporting a faculty that is willing to apply lessons learned in philosophical study to social issues of import to the community of which we are all a part. Tonight, I hope it will be shown that the practice of philosophy is not as detached, myopic, or trivial as some suppose, but instead that it gives rise to socially relevant, accessible, and important discussions that in turn may serve to influence our actions. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to the participants in tonight's debate. We have first a panel of distinguished UT professors who have graciously agreed to ensure and bolster the integrity of our present discussion. Please raise your hand when I say your name. Dr. Daniel Bolick, Dr. Arturo De Lazana, Dr. Corey Jewell, Dr. Robert Coons, and Dr. Thomas Miller. For those interested, you may find more information about these professors on the insides of your program. <laughs> We have next Dr. William Wimzak from the University of Chicago, who will act as commentator to the debate. Dr. Wimzak will play a very special role tonight, since not only is he commenting on views forwarded by two debaters, but by two of his former students. <laughs> <laughs> Both debaters wrote their dissertations under Dr. Wimzak's guidance and parted ideological company, only to have returned into their mentor's scrutinizing eye tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, our debaters for the evening are Dr. Sahotra Sarkar, professor in the departments of Integrative Biology and Philosophy here at the University, and Dr. Paul Nelson, a fellow of the Discovery Institute and professor in the program of Science and Religion at Biola University in Los Angeles. I fear that they need no more introduction than they will themselves supply shortly. So I will pass the debate on to Steve Lanier, a member of the Undergraduate Philosophy Association, who will act as the moderator for tonight's debate. Thanks, Antonio. Uh, All right, so before we start the debate, I'd like to make a few comments about the proceedings. Um, we'll begin with an opening presentation by each debater. Each debater will have 15 minutes during this time. Dr. Sarkar will present first, followed by Dr. Nelson. Following Dr. Nelson's initial presentation, we'll move to a rebuttal period. During this period, each debater will have 10 minutes to provide a rebuttal to the other's opening presentation. Dr. Sarkar will offer the first rebuttal, followed by Dr. Nelson. At this point, Dr. Wimsat will have 15 minutes to provide commentary on the discussion this far. 
And after Dr. Mozad's commentary, we'll take a short five minute break for uh, using the restroom or staying in the short break. <laughs> so after that, uh, we'll then move to questioning from our panel UT professors. Uh, during the first round of questioning, each of the panel members will direct one question to the debater of their choice. The debater will then have three minutes to respond to the question. Once each of the panelists has asked one question, we'll move to the second round of questioning, which will be conducted in the same fashion. Following the panel questioning, we'll have a period for members of the audience to ask questions of the debaters. When we reach this point, I'll provide more instructions for those audience members who are interested in asking questions. Following the audience questioning, Dr. Wimsat will provide a closing commentary on tonight's discussion. And finally, each of the debaters will give a five minute, will be given five minutes for closing remarks. Um, Dr. Sarkar will give closing remarks first, followed by Dr. Nelson. So before we begin, just a few notes. Uh, in the interest of fairness, and due to the fact that we have a lot on the schedule for this evening, time limits on the debaters during each, each section will be strictly enforced. That part of my job as moderator will be to keep time and enforce the time limits. So it looks like we're going to start the first round. Uh, again, in this section, each debater will have 15 minutes. I'll give each debater a notice when three minutes are in remaining of their time, and an additional notice when 30 seconds are remaining. I will then announce when the time limit has expired, and we will quickly move on to the next section of the debate. So I think we're, we're ready to begin. Uh, Dr. Sarkar will go first. He has 15 minutes, and you may begin. 